My name is Idris Jukren. On this fresh edition of the program, I shall be taking you through the Kano State Ministry of Education. Remember, this is a program in which we will be bringing you the activities of Kano State Governor, His Excellency Governor Abba Kabir Yusuf. Now, in this maiden edition of the program, we shall look at the Kano State Ministry of Education since inception. What has been achieved? A lot of activities have been going on in Kano State since the assumption of office of Governor Abba Kabir Yusuf. Now, I'm going to take you through this uh, activity here in Kano State of Ministry of Education. Now take a look. The former governor of Kano State, Senator Rahman. As of today, a form of 26 applicants that were established, all of these two are functioning. Scampers of the university and that of informatics program, which is quite unfortunate. Which shows the lack of care, which the previous administration showed. That's why I see the fusion in the status concerned. And we have to assess the level of the navigation of the institute and to know about your own plan. So that collectively we can see how we can restore things to normalcy within the university campus. I was lovely in front, but many of you were products of Institute of Transpitality and Travel from Bola Abuja. And you know what happened. Bola Hotel was established. It was constructed by the first military governor of Kano State, Lord Alaja Otobako. It was rehabilitated by civilian governor Alaja Otobako. And lastly, it was rehabilitated and converted into a university campus by Senator Rabi Musaku. We are taking lectures. Some have even started graduate. Collecting the certificates, I'm going into labor market. Unfortunately, the previous administration sent all of your packet, demolished the entire campus, and converted it into Prime Star Hotel. We condemn the action of the previous administration in totality. And because of the concern we have for you, open broad in our campaign, we made a promise that if elected, we are going to restore that campus back to where for what you choose to do. 716,800 Naira was made to Nepo for 57 number of students from Kano State. That's 
the sum of 111 million 819 300 naira was also paid for MIS students sitting for the uh, National Board of Arabic and Islamic Studies Examination. The sum of 23 million naira was also paid to NAPTEC for those sitting for uh, technical examination. The school feeding program was fully enhanced. The free food that stay behind during the salah break, namely unity schools at uh, Kalei that was moved to Borzo and the Kekala and uh, the IDP were all treated well during the salah break. They received very big cows and uh, I was all there by myself, so I went around by myself to see for myself, and I was highly impressed. A committee, like I said earlier on, was set up to go around the state to ascertain the damage done to the 30, 30 border school closed down. There was a lot of conversation for the view of opening them very, very soon, inshallah. And, uh, a committee was also set up to, win, to go around the schools, primary and secondary schools, to assess the level of dilapidation. The girls' child's education is uh, going to be enhanced. Their vehicles will be reactivated, they will go back for very soon. So, our girls will not be stored in the streets trying to put them a little slow before going to school. And all the courses I've already done, there are all the courses in the schools, most of the boarding school, girl boarding school, will inshallah be put uh, back to proper use. I just have to commend the effort of the Commissioner of Higher Education. When he assumed the office, I had a cause to sit down with him and give some directives, especially with regards to dilapidated infrastructures in our universities and other tertiary institutions. I briefed him about the establishment of this uh, 26 institutes, including this institute for informatics established by Senator Ravi Musa Konkoso, as was rightly said by the rector. I'm happy that um, I was one of the stakeholders that conceptualized the idea of these 26 institutes. And I'm very much happy to see informatic institutes got a lot of my time and attention during its construction. When we completed the school, the institute, we made sure we equipped it to the fullest. We bought computers. We bought standard furniture. 
we bought beds when we finished the construction of two hostels. I went to a standard company and bought those beds. I bought by mattresses, vitophones by myself. I bought bed sheets. I bought a bed. So it hurts me to see the school as it is today. But Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, any time I pass here, I used to just drop my head and think, oh my God. Informatics, sports were the only institute that were left. The rest of the 24 institutes, 100% closed. Rector, we thank you so much for the information of the grant from the CBN. And since we came on board, that has been what we have been doing. Going around, meeting with donor agencies, begging for grants, begging for contributions from all angles, so that together we can uplift the standard of education in our state. Ten billion is not a joke. And I'm happy that a portion of it is allocated for further developments here. You made mention of hostels. We have two. I don't know how many you are going to add. Maybe one for males, one for females. You mentioned staff houses. You mentioned the expansion of other departments. Very good, excellent. By this, you have saved a lot of money that will be channeled to other sectors of the economy, especially health sector. Nevertheless, we're going to continue providing necessary infrastructures for this institute and for other institutions across the state. opportunity to thank you most uh, sincerely for the reception I saw, which was accorded to me, advisors and other members of my entourage to this um, institute, the Colonel Institute of Fishers. This institute was one of the 26 institutes that were conceptualized. The institute was functioning very well. I was instrumental to all the construction CRS commission works, housing and transport. I spent a lot of my time here to ensure its completion. Students were studying very well. Businesses, fisheries uh, in our markets was going on very well. We were very much contented and happy when we left thinking that the government that took over from us will continue where we stopped in all the 26 institutes. Unfortunately, 
to Amaru. Just as the Commissioner of Higher Education has said, when they came, they brought all these schools, they sent the students away. Your Excellency, my name is Kamara Balali. When I saw those uh, houses before, when I was passing last month, I saw those houses, I was very bitter. Because that site was meant for sporting activities. Football pitches, two football pitches were put in place. Volleyball, basketball. I was asking who was instrumental to that. Nobody gave you information. I just came back from London uh, two days ago. I went to London purposely to visit institutions to visit companies so that we can get assistance for the state government. And Alhamdulillah, we have started ripen from the fruit. Those houses, I was informed just yesterday that somebody who is an indigenous of Kura local government and who happened to be a manager in one of these mortgage banks sought the permission of government to construct the houses. They have been completed 100% but not allocated. And when I came here, I was telling the commissioner we have invited that man. Let him come and sit down with us. Let's see how all the possibilities of acquiring the houses from him. So that they could be utilized as staff quarters for the institute. Now the rector is saying more are coming. Good history, I thank you so much. So far from what I've seen, I feel that um, we can sustain it. And co collectively, we are going to rehabilitate the entire structure within the school. I'm also very much interested in the resuscitation of admission here. By September, we want to see our students roaming here, going to classes, and doing whatever they can. I salute His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Kano State for his passion, as you said, of education. This has reflected right from his blueprint, which he promised the people of Kano State that they are going to see a different government, a different approach to education. And he has complemented that effort in different ways. I believe the 2023-24 budget reflects almost 50% of his allocation, 49% precisely, to education. This is a very good achievement and manifestation that indicates that yes, the government is for education. Secondly, His Excellency has made several releases in terms of funds to make sure that the decay in education is arrested at different stages, including renovation of schools, payment of feeding debts, and some other uh, efforts that he has made so far. Uh, similarly, His Excellency has more or less committed a lot of funds in the settlement of school fees, tuition fees, 
for both universities, for NACO that some of the children were at the fate of losing the opportunity to write the NACO examination, where by the grace of God, His Excellency stepped in and made sure that these students sat and wrote the work. I could recall it's almost 5,500 students that were to have lost their opportunity to write the exam at that particular time. Uh, of recent, we have seen the foreign students taken off. And uh, just as I said, KSSMB bear almost 60% of the burden of education in Kano State. Therefore, uh, what affected KSSMB directly and mostly is the gracious stand of His Excellency of paying salary promptly on the 25th of every month and fully with no deduction. I believe this particular gesture of His Excellency has gone a long way in enticing the teachers to remain in the teaching profession. Mm -hmm. At the same time, get enticed with his government. And it has shown his determination to ensure that teachers got what they deserve as at Wendy. This has really helped because I believe it is a general phenomenon all over the state that salaries are now paid promptly and uh, uh, fully. But the impact is more on the teachers because the resources the teachers depend on mostly to run their lives and their families is on salaries. And uh, that payment has really helped greatly in putting or returning the teachers' attention back to the classroom. Similarly, the students are being enticed with books and some other resources that are being committed by the government, which will soon take off. The Honorable Commissioner of Education have said it times and numbers uh, that books, uh, stationaries, and all other facilities are to be distributed very soon. And I believe with the commitment of the governor, that soon is just within the corner. Uh, these are some of the uh, items that I believe His Excellency has done greatly in the field of education. The maintenance of classrooms will have commenced somewhere in some schools. But I believe with time, yes. they will pick up fully and uh, the benefits will be there for everybody to see. Uh, similarly, His Excellency has at different times committed the state government uh, with different uh, service handlers mm -hmm. on education, uh, assuring that Kano State will partner with almost all development partners on education in particular the United Nations and some other uh, partners. So that has also greatly attracted attention of those partners to Kano State. And uh, they are willing and ready to partner with the government for the development of education. In the case of Sudan, uh, I came on board middle of June. And uh, since we don't have a uh, substantive executive chairman, being the Mosino director, I was on acting capacity. So I usually liaise with the Minister of Education since we have a, uh, a commissioner for education. Mm -hmm. I just want to mention two key important things that we have uh, succeeded within the period under review. Mm -hmm. One, uh, the commissioner engaged uh, all the MDAs, including my MDA, on the monthly meeting to give you an update of what each MDA does. And one of the uh, issues we noted was the issue of monitoring. Mm -hmm. And then he supported all the MBAs with fund, funding for the first time. We were given funding for the first time to strengthen monitoring and evaluation in all our schools. And we have already started that. Okay. Where we engage virtually all officers from grade level 13 and above to up to the top of management we we'll go out two to three times a week to monitor schools. And uh, this has actually helped us because we came to identify a very, very important uh, issue because we've been complaining of a shortage of teachers. Mm -hmm. We now discover a lot of people at the NE and the zonal office where the directors came that they should be deployed back to the classroom. 
As I'm talking to you now, we have deployed almost 4,000 officers back to the classroom to teach instead of staying at the LBA or the zona office doing nothing so that teaching and learning will improve. And basically, this is one of our mandates. Our mandate here is to manage uh, uh, funding of primary school and to ensure teaching and learning takes place in the schools. Mm -hmm. So I think this is one of the biggest achievements we have, we have done. Because if you are going to recruit that number of uh, officers, because so this officer that we have identified, they are senior officers, they have been in the system. So that has been more than five, ten years. Yes. So if you have people who have experience, the all we need to do now, we are working with one of our donors, partner. They have, I think they are going to support us in giving a refresher training. Because some of them have been at the office sitting down. But if you are deploying somebody back to the classroom, he need a kind of refresher training yes. so that he will know the pedagogy to teach in the classroom. Yes. So uh, now, when 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 you came, I mm -hmm. mean, when the governor came, mm -hmm. what was the situation of the schools in Kenya? Was it that bad? You see, the problem is uh, the situation is actually bad. Not only here, it's virtually everywhere. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at Kano, the number the number is huge. The the Kano has the highest number of primary, uh, public primary school in the whole of the country. Mm -hmm. We have 8,202 public primary schools. Mm -hmm. The state has been receiving the matching grant to support the states. But if you look at it, how much will we spend to renovate those schools? And the increasing number in schools with the enrollment, if you have too many children in the class, it overstretch the facilities. So this is some of the challenges we are, mm -hmm. are facing. Mm -hmm. But what I want to mention here is uh, the state government has uh, made a giant strike because even the budget, it allocated 49.11, which is even beyond or above what the, 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 the UNESCO, yes. about 26%. Yes. So uh, importantly here is that this kind of allocation, once it's released, and it's used judicially, I think we will achieve most of it. Because the problem we're facing is the issue of dilapidated classrooms, mm -hmm. overstretch, overcrowded children in the class, mm -hmm. more than two, sometimes you go and find a class more than 200. Mm -hmm. You cannot teach effectively because we have this enrollment. A lot of mobilization and advocacy has taken place. Parents are not bringing their children to school. But when they bring them, you find that they are congested in the class. So with a lot of initiative now mm -hmm. and the commitment of the government, to support and to get more funding to school. I think uh, sky is going to be our limit. Well, indeed, what a fresh start. That's uh, so far we can take on the program. And uh, you have seen, uh, this is just a tip of the iceberg. There are a lot of things under Kano State Ministry of Education, but this is so far we can take. But join us next week with uh, where I will come with another fresh edition of the program where we will enter another uh, angle and see what is going on. A lot of things are happening in Kano State. My name is Idris Chuprin. Thanks for watching and see you next week.